what's going on so you're looking to buy and sell things on facebook marketplace offer up craigslist and you ultimately have to meet the person in person in a agreed upon location and you're kind of on the fence because it's kind of dangerous right you don't know who you're dealing with you could get robbed scammed defrauded and your concerns are valid I've been doing this for over 10 years and uh, I have thousands of transactions on my belt where I've been doing this for over a decade and I've been there, done that. I've gotten robbed, scammed, defrauded. I've learned from my mistakes and I'm making this video so that you can go about it the way I do so you're not a victim. All right, so let's dive into it, all right? If you're selling something, always make sure that the that the buyer comes to you. Meet me halfway, this, that, and that. Third. No. No. Why? Because there is no set stone contract that says he has to buy it. So if you go out your way to sell this product, he could very well ghost you, which has happened to me multiple times. So... My rule of thumb is, is if I'm selling something, you got to meet me, um, preferably, obviously, in a public area where there's lots of cameras around, yada, yada, yada. Okay. If you're, if you're selling something, rule of thumb, always be nice. If you get a lot of lowball offers answer should be no or no thank you don't get into it because you're out to make a sale not enemies i've seen on uh tiktok or whatever if you lowball somebody have them meet you far away and then once they be once they get there tell them you know reflect on your lowball offer like are you kidding me that you know like you're making enemies nothing good could come of it so when you're selling something, be nice to people. If somebody lowballs you, just say no. A simple no suffices. End of story. And uh, yeah, whenever you're selling something, cash, 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 cash. I don't care what it is. They could tell you I'm gonna Venmo you, Zelle you, cash app you, whatever it is. I don't care. Cash only. Make sure you have a counterfeit a marker so you could check the bills are real and not fake all oh, i'll give you a check or a money order or a gift no cash do you really want the headache no so cash end of story and if they don't want to pay you cash that's their problem not yours all right moving on um always inspect whatever you're buying if the person you meet uh, all of a sudden has a family emergency or whatever, that's a huge red flag, right? They want you to give them the money so they could give you the product and they want to be gone. No, 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 no. Okay. Why? Because you have to inspect the product. Do your due diligence. If you're buying something, do some research on how to tell if it's counterfeit or not or what have you it's a it's a very broad spectrum because i don't know what you're buying it could be anything just do a little bit of brief research to make sure that whatever you're buying is authentic is of working condition and yeah just ed educate yourself so you know that what you're buying is what you want to buy because who wants a headache you might buy yourself a broken item or a stolen item that doesn't work like a cell phone it could have a bad imei or it could be uh, apple locked or whatever so yeah and also come with the tools to properly test it if the person wants to sell you a phone and the battery is dead bring a portable charger with you you know a portable bank like you know like some like it's like whatever and plug it in and be like okay if it's if it's dead then i'm gonna plug it in and see what happens it might take five minutes but you know and if the person that you're buying something from is in a rush and is like bro you're doing too much you're not doing anything you're doing what you're supposed to 
So yeah. All right, so I pretty much told you the proper buying and selling etiquettes. Now, moving on to safety. Rule number one is always make a phone conversation with the person you're meeting up. Why? Because if you talk to the person, you'll get a better understanding of who you're going to meet up with. And if they're crazy or whatnot, whatever the case may be, that'll be apparent while you're on the phone with them. And if they're difficult to talk to on the phone, then just imagine what it's going to be like if you meet them in person. So use your intuition, your gut feeling, and you know, if something isn't right or the way they're talking is kind of cryptic or whatever, and it's it doesn't make you feel comfortable, then don't deal with them. Okay, so they pass the phone test. They, you know, call them up. Next thing I do is I take their phone number and I go to carrierlookup.com. It's completely free. All you do is, is you put their phone number in and you click you know, whatever, and it'll tell you what carrier that their phone number is under. If it's AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, that's a good thing because most likely it's a contract postpaid account and it's most likely affiliated with their social security number, their name, their address. So that's a good thing. If it's a prepaid like Metro PCS, whatever, that's a little bit of a red flag, right? But it's not a deal breaker. Um, why do I say it's a bit of a red flag? Because it doesn't take much to get a prepaid phone number. All it takes is cash. You go to any prepaid store, you give them cash, give me a first month, you might have to pay a SIM card fee or an activation fee. And you can literally make the name Joe Schmo, address is 123 Sesame Street. So. Uh, prepaid is a bit of a red flag, but not everyone has the credit or what have you, so it's not a deal breaker. What is a deal breaker is a VoIP carrier, meaning VOIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol, which is Google Voice or Text Me app or what have you. Essentially, all they need is internet, a working internet, uh, email that they, that they could easily create, and download uh, Google Voice or Magic Jack, or there's so many VoIP services that are free that, yeah, I just don't deal with VoIP carrier utilizing people. Um, the only one exception was, is I was buying something from someone and I told them, look, I don't deal with VoIP, sorry, not sorry, but I have a cardinal rule. And come to find out, the guy was a NYPD police officer and they all use VoIP. So that made sense. And that was the only time I bought something from somebody that had a VoIP phone number. Uh, he, he ultimately called me on his uh, actual number and said, look, I'm a cop, you know. And I said, I, I, I understand, you know. And him telling me he was a cop made me feel a lot more comfortable dealing with them because the transaction was well over a thousand dollars yada 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 all right so we got that down next thing obviously meet in a public area that has a lot of uh cameras also um go with somebody Go with somebody and if you can't go with somebody and you have to go alone, which is doable, I always go alone. Um, I always utilize the buddy system. It could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, a trusted friend, where I essentially text message them. Hey, I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a deal with somebody I don't know on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. His name is whatever, Joe. This is his phone number. This is what we're doing. I'm buying or selling. This is where we're meeting. Send that to them so that they know. They don't have to respond back or ask any questions. And then once you meet the person, if you could, 
you know, stay vigilant. If you see the person pulling up in a car, take a picture of their car, take a picture of the li their license plate, take a picture of their face discreetly, not obviously, and send that to your person who you trust. I call it the buddy system. Send it to your buddy. And yeah, uh, that will give you a layer of insurance. God forbid something happens, you have evidence, you know? So yeah, it's actually saved me and helped me. Uh, individual pulls out a gun. I tell him, look, not for nothing. You can do whatever you want. I'll give you whatever you want. But just to let you know, I'm going to have to call the cops. I got you, your face, your your car, your driver's license. Do you really want these problems? Like, go rob a bank. You're better off. It saved me. Uh, there was another time where um, somebody actually gave me fake currency. And I reached out to the person. I'm like, yo, not for nothing. But you gave me fake currency. And if you don't know... The Secret Service has a bigger budget than, than the United States Navy. So if you make a complaint that you were defrauded and given fake currency by an individual and you tell them, look, I have a picture of your face, I have a picture of your driver's your, your license plate, the car that you were in, the phone number you utilized, this, that, and the third. Best believe that person came back and took the money that they initially gave me and gave me real money. I told them, look, just give me my product back or give me the money that, you know, you were supposed to give me. And I tell them, look, if you don't, I'm going to have to send this to the Secret Service. And they took care of it. I, I was made whole again. But yeah, uh, always do your due diligence. If you're buying something and they're in a rush, that's not your problem, okay? It's not your problem. All of a sudden, people have a medical emergency or a family emergency where they have to go and they want to take your money and give you the product and leave. No, inspect the product. If they say they're in a hurry, that's a red flag. If something's off, that's a red flag. If they're they have like a shiesty on that's a major red flag i tell people like yo take that shiesty off because none of the day that 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 face mask or whatever because none of the day like stop playing with me I, I don't feel comfortable you know uh yeah uh I, I believe i covered it all deal with cash only Make contact with the person via phone, check what carrier they're using, and just vet them out, you know, and that's it. And most likely, if a deal is too good to be true, it most likely is. Never, ever, ever ship anything out to anyone. Uh, that's how it is. Oh, you know, this, that, third. Hopefully, this video was informative. Hopefully, I helped you out to be a better buyer and seller on Facebook Marketplace and how to protect yourself. Leave a comment below if you have a crazy story. Share this video with a friend or a loved one that deals with Facebook Marketplace a lot uh, or OfferUp or Craigslist. I'm not sure if Craigslist was, is relevant now. Back in the day, I used to do Craigslist a lot. Then offer up, let go came out, and then offer up, bought out, let go. Now it's just offer up, and then Facebook. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been there, done that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Peace in the Middle East. Thank you so much. Be safe.